Good day, Africa. You're welcome once again to AgroLink on AAE TV, where we are looking at the role of higher education institutions in promoting sustainable agricultural practices in Ghana. We are specifically at the University of Cape Coast, and we are going to look at their role in promoting this venture. My name is Nana Isman Basam. Do stay with us. Hello, Africa. You're welcome to AgroLink on AAU TV. AgroLink is a program that aims at showcasing and highlighting agricultural activities on the continent. Welcome back. This is still AgroLink on AAE TV where we are looking at sustainable agricultural practices from the perspective of the higher education institution. So you're welcome, Doc. Thank okay. you. Can you please mm -hmm. introduce yourself? All right. Thank you, Nana. Um, my name is Dr. Lawrence Achampon, a lecturer at the Department of Agri Economics and Extension, University of Cape Coast, and a member of Agribusiness um, Coordinating Team at the department. Thank you. Okay, that's nice. Okay. Well, before we even start this discussion, what does sustainable agriculture mean to you, especially in the era of sustainable development promotion? All right. So when we talk of um, sustainable agriculture, we are talking about agricultural practices and techniques that is capable of meeting the present needs mm -hmm. and also meeting the needs of future generations. So any kind of agricultural activities that we engage ourselves in, that the presently those who are engaging in it, they will be able to meet their daily needs. But whilst they are meeting their daily needs, they will also think of future generation so that they will not deplete all the resources available so that when they are gone, the present generation is gone, future generation will also be able to meet their needs. So you will look at it in terms of um, if it is production, you make sure that you till the land in such a way that you don't destroy it. Mm -hmm. All right. If it is activities that will even destroy the land, what you are getting, you should be able to invest it in some activities that even if the land is not there, because of the investment you have made, future generations can benefit from that investment to meet the needs. Okay. So when we talk of sustainable agriculture, this is my take. Okay. Okay, and Doc, you're handling a, a, well, a component that is after my own heart. <laughs> you realize that when it comes to agriculture, especially within our space, Ghana, that's what I can speak on. Yeah. Realize there's a negative stigma attached to this, um, to this well, line of study. You realize that even as a form of punishment in schools, people are asked to weed. Yeah. As a form of punishment in schools, people are asked to plant. And this, um, this has been a challenge yeah. that most institutions face when it comes to even numbers. So what do you think about this? What do you have to say when it comes to this? Yeah, I think um, that is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. And in fact, in our, when we were growing up mm -hmm. in school, that was what we were going through. When you do something wrong, they will, in fact, if it's a school garden, they will just ask you the whole week, you will not come to classroom, you are going to weep. Mm -hmm. All right. So growing up, the idea is that, oh, it means agric is punishment. But interestingly, agric is not punishment. Mm -hmm. The point is that you eat, I eat, we all eat. Now in Ghana, now we are saying that the economy, maybe um, there are some challenges. We can have the same dress that we can use over and over and over. But can you say, if you eat today, tomorrow you will not eat, another day you will not eat? Is it possible? Mm -hmm. No. If you even wear something, almost all the things that we are wearing, they are coming from agriculture. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All the things that we are getting from our various industries, where are we getting them from? The raw materials are from agriculture. So technically, that is a wrong notion that but I'm happy to say that now it's changing. changing yeah. Now that trend is changing. The culture where agric was used as a form of punishment is actually changing. And I would advise those who are still in that do using agric as a form of punishment to cease from it, all right, and see agric 
as the way to go as business so that the young generation will not look at our Greek as we were looking at it in the time past, but they will look at it with a different eye mm -hmm. that the same way a banker get up in the morning that he's going to bank, if I get up that I'm going to my farm, that is my business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is what gives me money. Okay, Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's okay. So, um, Prof, you mentioned something that um, people, individuals, stakeholders should look at agri as a business. You realize that a lot of um, governments, especially within Africa, are um, calling for students to become entrepreneurial because of the high rates of graduate unemployment. And I think agriculture, when you study agri or even involved in any of the lines, you shouldn't stay home after graduation. Sure. Agri offers so many opportunities for students and even other stakeholders to ensure that they are employed and also employ other other people. So um, what are you doing or what is your department doing in ensuring that your students are equipped with the requisite skills needed to ensure they don't become a liability to society but become resourceful? Um, resourceful? Thank you very much. Um, we develop, as I told you, I'm part of a coordinating team mm -hmm. for an agribusiness program. And when we were developing this program, we had this graduate unemployment in our mind. And okay. we said, how can we use this program to tackle this kind of a challenge? So in this particular program, what we've done is that we let the student go through the program from first year, second year, third year. Now in your third year final semester, we engage you, we mentor you to let you come out with an idea based on the courses that you have done all these three years. What are some of the ideas that have come to mind? What are some of the business? And in the good thing is that we don't really force the student. Mm -hmm. We give them the leeway to choose what they want. Okay. All right? And then when they have chosen it, we take them through some kind of mentorship. They are signed with two different coaches. One, a technical coach, and one, entrepreneurial or business coach. Now, if you have chosen a project in relation to animals, then we pick somebody from animal science to give you the technical advice. And then we choose somebody from our department, agri economics and extension, or sometimes school of business or any other place to be your entrepreneurial coach. So these two people will guide you to do a micro enterprise or to actualize the business you have in mind. Okay. So you have a whole semester for your final year first semester in our you don't go to classroom all that you are doing is that the business you have in mind do a micro aspect of it for us to see so that all the mistakes that businessmen do you will do it at this level where the cost is not so much, so much yeah. all right so that we can advise you and guide you so when we have advised you we've guided you and you have gone through all this and you've made all the mistakes after you come back in the second semester, then you come and complete your project. Now, because we have inculcated this business idea into you already, when you are going home, even when you are looking for a job, the mindset is that I'm looking for a job, get money, and go and actualize my business. And at the same time, what we also do is as a department, we don't leave the students just like that. Mm -hmm. Those who come out with very promising business plan and business potentials, we scout for opportunities and then we let them go into these business challenges. They will go in there and um, pitch their business idea. And those who are successful, they are able to get some funding and we have some, a number of them who have gone through this, they've gotten some funding and as I speak, they are implementing their own businesses. And there are a number of people who also went through the project and they got home and a number of them are also implementing what they got from here. You talk to some of them and they will tell you that they are not even willing to work for anybody, anybody. but they are mm -hmm. their own boss. And they are making money. I can tell you some are making far much more than I do. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and I wish I'm even in their shoes That's anyway. the joy of every parent. Every parent. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. So, um, for, uh, Doc, you realize that there are a lot of individuals who, um, after studying agriculture, one way or the other, they drop off. Yeah. Sometimes you realize that, um, especially even in the selection of courses, people are too young to even realize what they are interested in. 
so they end up selecting things just because and then when they get there they realize the lab is not there so how do you ensure or even because with agriculture every line of production is involved in the form exactly. even people some people say um the face begins the moment you are born you're putting clothes you're putting a yeah. cradle yeah. that's made out of wood sure. then when you die you go into a coffin you are put <laughs> under the head and that's also a great yeah. yes so how do you ensure or even instill the discipline in them and let them understand that agriculture goes beyond planting crops and vegetables so All even right. rearing animals thank you very much that's why so in the program uh, we have structured in such a way in fact we have a course in value chain mm -hmm. All right. And in this, and almost in fact, let me say this that our mode of approach to teaching in all the courses we teach is a value chain approach. Okay. So if you are teaching a course in crop science, you are not to the agribusiness students, the focus is that you are not teaching it raw, but you are teaching it with a value chain approach to guide them for them to know that, well, if I'm teaching crop, it means there is business in the input selection mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. Go for instance, you go out there, people are into cocoa farming, and those into cocoa farming, what do they need? They need plantain saka, all right, as a form of providing shade mm -hmm. for the cocoa. Now imagine if you have about 10, 20 acres of cocoa farm, where are you going to get this plantain saka? Yeah. The plantain saka people are using it as a business. Mm -hmm where they are using different mechanisms to multiply so that when you get one sucker, he can multiply and get about 20 out of it and sell to farmers. So the input delivery is a business. Mm -hmm. All right. Then you come to the production. We show them there is business. All right. There is transportation. There is business. Some even go into just packaging mm -hmm. of what is already exactly. there. Mm -hmm. And that is business. Mm -hmm. All right, some will go to provision of services. That is business. That's business yes. So, and I can say that I'm very happy to say most of the students we are training, we have instilled this in them, and they now understand that a Greek is not just going to tell the land mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. just going to rear the animals, animals. but mm -hmm. there is more to it. All right, and they are picking. Maybe you will talk to some of the students later and you will realize that basically most of uh, a number of them, they are not even going into the actual product because they know people are already there, but they are picking businesses along, along the, the way, line, yeah. along the line. So that is it. And all the lecturers who are in today's program have been conscientized that let's try as much as possible to install these business ideas mm -hmm. into the students. And I'm happy that when you look at our agribusiness program, we admit students with any background. Mm. Oh, wonderful. Okay. <laughs> yes. We, so we, we don't really restrict because we know That's there are some people, he studied general art, he's interested in, in agri. Greek, yes. I mean, do it. He studied visual art, he's interested he in agri. Greek. He did home economics, he's interested in agri. Come. Once you have the interest, ours is the interest. Once the interest is there, come and do it. And Nana, our. It will interest you mm -hmm. to know that since we started the program, our best, most of the best students we have produced from the program they didn't do agree. Agree, exactly. They did general art. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the general art is not the general art where you did economics and others, okay. but the general art where he did English, French, French. Ghanaian language, CRS, history, and the others. Wow. But they come and they get a first class and they become wow. the overall best student. Wow. So it's about interest. Yes. So it's about interest. So for us, once you are interested, you are welcome. That is beautiful. <laughs> that is very, very good. OK, so um, now let's look at the um, success rates of your students. What are some of the initiatives, that, uh, past initiatives that they, um, well, they took part in? And then what are the, you know, usually you realize that on campus, people are interested in the agricultural school Value, value chain but when they are done you realize they drop it and then they end up in different sectors but you realize there's so much room for people to venture into agri agri has no limits i think sure. even saturation is is not there's been nothing like saturation not there's always all. room for people to venture so what has been the success rates of your students all right thank you um i would say we've been very successful and one thing that I want to even draw your attention mm -hmm. to is that because of 
the mode of the training we give. Now there is competition between the student wanting to do their thing and some industries also wanting them because they know these people have come with a business mentality. So if you employ them... Pa pa please wait. There's something. Okay, it's going. Okay, yes. Now. So if you employ them, mm -hmm. they are coming with business mentality and they are going to make your firm successful. So in terms of some of them getting jobs, we will say that our program, the, the rate is very high. All right. Now, when you speak to all those who are working, those who are going for further studies, mm -hmm. most of them are thinking of the business idea they went through over here, something big. And all that they are doing is that always they are in contact touch with us. They want to get some money and establish themselves. Again, there are a number of them also when they finish, probably they have parents who can support them because that is the one of the challenges yes. that the, the, the students face, actually. So they have parents who could support them. And those who have been supported, we've gotten some who have gone into uh, packaging of plantain chips. And if I tell you, one of our students, he that if any time you see check, check plantain chips, mm -hmm. Thank, give thanks to School of Agri that hey. that student came from here yeah. and we mentor that student and he's making millions of uh, wow. Ghana cities out of just packaging of plantain chips. All right. Wonderful. We've had some who have gone into um, processing of coconuts into ice cream. And I'm happy coconut to say ice cream. coconut into ice cream because they wow. thought they came and they said, well, there are a number of people who want to eat ice cream, but they are lactose intolerance, yeah. and they cannot eat the ice cream that is in the market. But can't we get milk from coconut and do something so that they can also eat it? They did it, and it's wow. And two of them, one is in Kumasi, one is in Accra, they've taken it as business, as I speak to you now. There are others, you know, who are also trying to do something with our normal sobolo. That one, I wouldn't want to talk much about it exactly. because people are out there. The moment I delve more into it, they may go uh -huh. out and then take our idea mm -hmm. before because we are working on it to see if we can even register the idea, patent it so that exactly. nobody comes to take it. So for the sobolo, be watch out. <laughs> okay. you, you, you will see something in the market okay. very soon All and you right. are going to be happy. Doc, so, yes, this brings me to my next question. <laughs> you realize that these students are doing a lot of yeah. amazing things, but the issue is now with patenting. How do you ensure that the idea stays fresh to them? And these, especially with um, investors and other individuals approaching them, ensuring that these students have control over their ideas and not stolen from them. All right, thank you. So this is what we are doing. As I indicated to you that each group of students have a mentor. Mm -hmm. Now, when you go through the program and an investor, somebody wants to come in, we've told them strictly, without your mentor, you don't engage anybody. So more or less, we have become like uh, the managers for the students, their business, so that we can enter into proper contractual agreement with those who want to invest in their business. So they don't take them for granted. In addition also, as part of the training, we invite people sometime from the Registrar General's Office, hmm. all right, okay. from Food and Drugs Authority, hmm. from all these people to come and talk to them, to take them through the process of registering their business, process of patenting their, their, their product. In fact, this group, um, the, the, this cohort we are now dealing with, just this uh, coming Friday, someone is coming to talk to them about business registration, certification, and patenting. Okay. All right. So we take them through all this, and then we bring the expert so that the student can liaise with them. They will give them all the processes so that they can register the idea. And later, mm -hmm. even if they haven't commercialized it yet, it's while so they are in the idea. process of getting money to mm -hmm. do it, nobody come to take it away from them. So we are very much of, aware of this. And we are leaving no stone on 10 okay. to let our students who have toiled to come out of this. And I tell you, those who are doing the Sobolo, the cost 
the student themselves have in care is, is, is a lot mm -hmm. because it involves a lot of lab work here and there. They have to go to the, pharma, uh, the school of pharmacy. Mm. Yes, they have a lab there. They were, and they went there and this lab have to charge each of them because they were four students and they charge each of them. God, the lab said the arrangement and other things are not for free. They paid. So if they have paid and they've gone through all this, I think it will be unfair to our, on our yeah. part if we don't help these students to patent or register this idea so that nobody can so to to take them. it away. So we are in it to help them, especially those with very innovative business ideas, okay. so that they can patent it and it become their bona fide property. And, and, and look, one money. more thing. <laughs> you mentioned that the cost involved is a lot. Let's look at investors. How do you attract investors? You realize that there are people who are even interested in funding the initial fees so that as soon as the project picks up, they are involved in it. A lot of people have money but don't know where to invest yes. here. So how do you attract investors or is there a way or what you are currently even undertaking to ensure that you attract investors even for the initial fees? Great. For the students? That is why, you know, when you come to the University of Cape Coast, we have what we call the divine, the design thinking and the innovation hub. That is the initiative of the vice chancellor. Okay. All right. Design thinking and innovation. And innovation hub. And that center's main idea is to promote businesses of students, lecturers, or workers in the university, and then people around the community. So what the center is doing is that they are linked with investors like Cos uh, KIC, Cosmos Innovation, mm -hmm. like Magdan, and wow. Roof Forum and others, all right? So mostly what they do is that these bigger investors or organizations bring what we call some uh, business challenge. So we coach, we mentor our students, and then they will go into it. And through it, they are able to gain something. Exactly. When, yes, they, they, are, they mentor them, they coach. In fact, those who are not even able to win, they benefit from the training, which help them. And those who win, some win up to about 300 uh, what do you call it thirty thousand dollars oh okay yes fifty thousand dollars as for those winning maybe some ten thousand ghana cities those minor minor grants they always do all right so we bring these investors also on board and then the students are also allowed to share on their status on their mm -hmm. facebook on all this and like i was telling you the sobolo business an investor have seen it and, and he's coming, he's interested and he's coming to us. Unfortunate thing with the investors, one of the areas that I'll plead with them, you know, most of them, eh, they want the one that is already cooked. Exactly. <laughs> that, that is a problem. Yes. They wouldn't want to go start because when you are starting with the research and the other things, the Trial probability is mm -hmm. that you may not be successful. So they want to come in when you have done all the trial and error and you're almost on the path. Then they want to come and enjoy come, with exactly. you. But the good thing is, when you come, since we have suffered through getting all this process, you won't get it for free. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We have to benefit from exactly. the toy that we have gone through. Makes a lot of sense. Yes. Okay. We'll go for a short break, and when we come back, we shall continue with this interesting discussion. Do stay with us. Hello, Africa. You're welcome to AgroLink on AAU TV. AgroLink is a program that aims at showcasing and highlights agricultural activities on the continent. From the break, we are still on our discussion on promotional sustainable and cultural practices within the higher education space. You're welcome back. Thank you. Okay, so now let's look at commercialization of this initiative. You mentioned that this is an interdisciplinary approach where you bring different departments within the university together to ensure that your students are well equipped with the requisite skills needed to um, promote agribusiness in the different fields. So let's look at, um, let's say there's a student in maybe psychology or sociology and is interested in agriculture but has no idea on how to even go about it. Is this, um, is this initiative open to such individuals or even 
others who might not necessarily be within the university community but are interested in this initiative? Is your is your door open to such individuals? No, no, our doors are always open. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, because you see, um, the, as a university, our mandate is teaching, mm -hmm. research, mm -hmm. and community outreach. And what you mentioned is within our outreach ambient. All right. And we always have people like that who come to us. Okay. Some of them, we, we just attach them to the, um, the, the agribusiness students okay. okay so that they will learn together there will be there are some others who come for a technical mm, advice, advice all right on what they want to do and we normally do this at no cost because these are startups who are just coming all right so our doors are always open to anybody who have some ideas and he need our support we are always open to them to help them in fact we are doing it and we want to do it more and we are inviting anybody who want to because you know we are in the part where people really don't value technical yes. advice and all mm -hmm. this kind of, and that is why most people go into project and they fail because they don't come for the relevant advice so if you really want to go into agri as business but not as our forefathers, our mothers have been doing, but you want to go in as business, seek the relevant technical advice. Go to the experts, come, and we are there. We will help you. So don't worry. You are doing geography. Mm -hmm. You are doing history. You are doing French. But you think you have a passion for agriculture. Come and let's talk. Okay. <laughs> right. Now let's look at some of the challenges. This is a very beautiful initiative. I'm sure it's a, it hasn't been easy and it's still not even easy. Not at all. Exactly. What are some of the challenges that you've encountered along the lines? All right. The major challenge, I will say, and every day, that one we always mention is the funding. Because some of the things sometimes students want to do, if you look at it, it involves a lot. Mm -hmm. And lack of funding sometimes prevents some of them from doing what they really want to do. So that has been a major challenge. In addition to looking at the project, most of them, if you look at the ideas of businesses, they want to package, they want to process, they want to do this, they want to do that. They really, we would have wished we would get a space probably we would have an agribusiness lab mm -hmm. yeah. where they can do processing, where they can do testing, where they can have cubicles to meet their mentors and their coaches, where we can have even a small conference room to advise and do all these things. In fact, that is the dream for the department. We, we want to have an agribusiness hub we have the design thinking and innovation hub okay. but we want to have an agribusiness Business. hub where we can have all these things there so that the student can come to that center and experiment and do whatever that they want to do now as i speak to you some of the idea the students really struggle you know for space mm -hmm. on where they will do it. so that has been a major challenge and then the funding issue that i also um, talk about. So if um, I may continue, what I will ask investors out there, people out there who are passionate and want to see agriculture mm -hmm. moving, come to our aid. Probably you are a multinational company somewhere. Come and build a center and maybe we'll put your name exactly. on it. We will name that building after you. Maybe it's so uh, agribusiness innovation hub. You know, and I think if you do that, you will look back in future and you will say, indeed, you have been part of the agricultural transformative agenda of the School of Agriculture yes. Department of Agribusiness. It will be great for even your old students yes. who are yes. now doing so well 
who can maybe partner your alumni, they should be able to partner sure. and then assist with this sure. initiative. Sure, yes, okay. sure. They are all welcome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now let's look at, um, talking about partners, let's, let's look at some of the partners that the institution has, your department has, when it comes to um, promoting agribusiness and even students' initiatives. All right. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> what are the partners? Maybe let me start within the university. Okay. Because the university is within the department here, but we are partner with other departments in the School of Agriculture, all right? We are partner with other departments in the university, okay? Because we go to biochemistry, we go to home economics, yeah, home, home economics, we go to pharmacy, we go to all these departments, we are partner with them. We are partner with the design thinking and the innovation mm -hmm. hub, as I just mentioned. We are partnering with... Um, KIC, Cosmoc Innovation Challenge, we are partnering with them. We are partnering with um, Magdan, mm -hmm. all right? All these kind of institutions are part of our partners. Roof Forum, they support our cultural initiative. We are partnering with all these uh, wonderful um, organizations. So these are the few ones that easily come to mind. Okay, all right. <laughs> so you mentioned earlier some of the <coughs> challenges that yeah. you are facing when it comes to yeah. uh, promoting agribusiness within the higher education space. Sure. So let's look at, you have been doing this for a while, so I'm sure you've adopted innovative ways of ensuring sure. that you tackle some of these sure. challenges. So can you take us through? So when it comes to the funding, this is what we do. When the student come in first year, we let them know that in your final year, you are going to have a project. Mm -hmm. And in that project, each student will contribute 1,000 towards that project. So if you're a group of five, each bring 1,000, 1,000, you have 5,000 at least to do something. All right, and that has been the main innovative way we have been using to help the student to go through their projects. So from level 100, you know that is it. So you inform your parents, all right, and then you'll bring that money. And when you bring it, we don't let you that that is a you you come and pay it we keep it in an account all right okay. mm -hmm. yes so that you don't lack funding when you are supposed to take a very critical activity when you are in need of it you bring your budget mm -hmm. do it's your own money <laughs> but mm -hmm. it should be spent on the business it's all part of the agro business training it's, it's part of the training mm -hmm. you bring your budget and other things we will vet mm -hmm. and the account, the HOD will sign. Then we go and withdraw the money and give it to you. And when you have used it, you have to come and retire. You have to bring mm -hmm. out receipt and everything to show that indeed you, you, have, you have used it for. So that is one area that we are using to deal with the funding mm -hmm. uh, uh, problem. And then when it comes to the areas of um, the space, Though we haven't gotten our own space, but at least we are trying to use the existing labs and the others that we have in the university to do mm. it. Though ideally, we would have wished to have our own yeah. because these labs and others, since we are not a, their core business, the students will plan with, and exactly. they've given you that you are coming today, you go and they have some different yeah. activities. And for that reason, you can't. you can't do it. But we are managing with us. So that is in our own small way how we are trying to get things done. Okay, all right. So now, finally, you realize that you are doing a lot. Agribusiness is actually very exciting. I'm excited just listening to you. <laughs> so um, what call do you have for individuals and other stakeholders who might, especially those championing graduate um, unemployment issues and ensuring that um, students are equipped with their entrepreneurial skills? Even UCC, this is your new focus, where you are ensuring to be the university that promotes entrepreneurial sure. skills within your students to make them ready for yeah. the job market. So any call to individuals and stakeholders who might not even know about agribusiness or the importance of it, and those who might be interested, who have funds but don't know what to do with them, why they should invest in your department? Wow. So thank you, Nana. <laughs> I've said a lot. <laughs> yes, you've said a lot. Yes. What I would say is that organizations, individuals, who have funding, agri agribusiness is the way to go. Mm -hmm. And if you help us, let's say School of Agri, you come and support this project, you will not regret it. Because it will go a long way. It will really go a long way to have a rippling effect on our struggling economy. So we are calling them. 
they should come to our aid and support us in whatever way that they can. I can assure them whatever funding that they put in the university has stretches the mechanism to ensure that it will be put to appropriate use. So they are all welcome to partner us. And if you are individuals, students and others, you have finished SHS, you are passionate about agriculture, you did not study agri, don't worry, our doors are open. Come. And the beauty of it is that because we know we are dealing with students with this diverse background, our approach to teaching is different because we don't assume that you know. So don't be afraid. And I'm happy that even those who come in without their great background are more happier when they join the program. So if you are very passionate, come. If you are a parent, and the sad aspect is that some parent, if you want, if you said they are children should come and do agribus, then hey, agri, no, 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 please. That was then. This is now. This is now. Okay. So kindly allow your ones who have interest in ag uh, agribusiness to come and do it. And I can assure you that it will be one of the best decisions that you've, you've taken. And I, have, I wish some of those students who have completed would have been here. Some of them, when they, we, we normally go for outreach to secondary schools and some express interest, they talk to their parents, they wouldn't want them to do it. But they have to come to me and I talk to their parents. And now some of them, as we say, they are bringing me my stone. Mm -hmm. Because I've made them make the right decision. And they are so excited, super, super, super excited. So parents, a Greek then is not as it is now. So your children who are interested, please let them come. Investors, come and help us build our agribusiness hub. In fact, a day that hub will come into reality, my joy will be complete. <laughs> okay. And now one last thing. Why should I enter or venture into agribusiness? What I will say is that why should you choose agribusiness? You should choose agribusiness because it's the only business that will never die. Everybody eats. When you wake up in the morning and you eat today, you cannot say tomorrow you will not eat. You can forgo your clothing, but you cannot forgo eating. And remember, almost everything that we do, the cloth we wear is from agriculture. The furniture we sit on, is from agriculture. Our industries, almost all the raw materials they need are all from agriculture. That tells you that agribusiness field is so huge that it never gets saturated. There is always an opportunity for you to choose along the value chain. So we are inviting everybody who is passionate, who is interested in agribusiness to come on board. Thank you. This brings us to the end of our discussion on using agribusiness as a tool for promoting sustainable agricultural practices within the higher education space. My name is Nana Isman Basam, and do stay tuned on AgroLink and AUTV for more educative content.